My name is Romel Armugam, which is another way to pronounce um, awesome. Um, I am an art director, and here I am at TEDx to talk to you guys about thinking inside out the box. Actually, it should be um, thinking um, inside the outside box, but you know those are just technicalities. Let's leave boxes aside now. Um, let's talk about circles, retro circles, to be in fact. Now. Design trends are really important, whether you are a creative or not. Um, they are import as important to us as vanilla ice cream is to a frappuccino. You can argue with me and say, no, fra a frappuccino would taste better whether there is vanilla ice cream or not. But I've got to say that in that case, you've been having a really crappy frappuccino. You've been ripped off. But seriously, design trends are really, 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 really important. Um, what is a design trend? Um, it's basically what defines what's hot in a certain era. You know, what styles are in and out, um, what styles have gone and died. So there are trends that come fast and then they die slow. Some are vice versa. Um, some come here to stay and then they never leave. And it's our job uh, as creatives to recognize these trends when they come. You know, then you grab hold of them, you master them. And then when the time is right, you gotta let go. Now, I see a little problem with our country, at least in Colombo, because I work in Colombo. So, um, and that is um, that we manage the whole identifying, mastering, and you know, grabbing hold on to part. But when the time comes, we just don't let go. And one of these instances is retro circles. Now, guys, if you are using retro circles in your design and you are creative, please stop. It is a trend that died way back in 2008, because I see it here a lot. And the worst part is, this is the only element people think about when you mention the word retro or vintage. No, it isn't. Actual vintage or retro posters look something like this. You'd be lucky if you find an entire poster full of those circles. And these um, are done by modern artists. So I could say and describe um, tons of trends that have come um, and died, um, but I don't have the time. So I'm just going to run through a few. Um, this is what I like to call the badass in cool blue pose with um, <laughs> when it's taken out of context. And here is what I like to call the diffused glow look. It gives a very heavenly, ethereal, um, dream state feeling, which people don't use a lot. I see tons of girls using it on Facebook. Please stop, it's nauseating. Uh, <laughs> and um, everyone's favorite, vector swirlies. Um, which, which also died somewhere early in 2009. Um, <clears throat> so then I guess you could tell me, oh, Romel, if you're so smart and you're all-knowing, you know, uh, tell us how to stay relevant. Tell us how to know what's in and what's not. I'll tell you. Uh, it's, it'll take a bit of work. Uh, but if you're passionate about your art, if you are a creative, or you just want to know what's in and what's not, you uh, would apply this. And it's simply by doing some research. You know, uh, and one way is subscribe yourself to magazines. The thing about magazines, it, it's, it's constant. You know, it's either monthly or quarterly. So well, um, you, you are always in the loop. You're always updated. Or you can, you know, arm yourself with some books. The, the good thing about books is there is much, much more volume in there. Um, but the down, there are a few downsides. And one is that... Um, uh, I think, in, in my opinion, books get outdated really easy. Like, I'll give a maximum life of two to three, maybe four years before they get outdated. They're really pricey, and also not many bookstores here you know, carry books on design. So if you can't afford books, stick on to magazines. Um, there are good magazines like CMYK, Print, How, Computer Arts Projects. Um, and if you can't stick on magazines, if your budget isn't allowed that either, uh, another easy way is, is to notice movie posters that come out uh, of popular movies from Hollywood. Because when they put out movie posters, um, you know, they incorporate the, the freshest trends, the, the newest looks, and most importantly, um, you know, um, the newest uh, color trends. Um, and just like design trends, color trends are also really important. You can have the lousiest design on earth, and you can sell it, if you have the proper color trend, people don't even care how you use it, as long as it's there and it's eye-catching. So let's run through some of the popular trends that have always been there um, 
uh, as long as digital grading has come up. Digital grading means digitally being able to color something. Um, this is one of the earliest trends that came up, the blue and gold uh, phase, which gives a very epic and gritty feeling. Uh, like you can see in G.I. Joe posters, they've used um, the hues of blue and gold. If, by the way, if you uh, were a fan of the cartoon when you were a kid, don't watch the movie. It was a horrible movie. <laughs> Sucked. Um, and then somewhere in 2010, this uh, palette evolved. They added a red to it. Um, and now they have the blue, gold, and red phase. Then somewhere in 2008, they also came up with a popular palette of um, pink and blue. It was very soft on the eyes. They used it in a lot of photography, uh, movie posters. This palette also evolved, and they added more blues, um, sorry, more yellows, purples, greens, and now they use it in a lot of, um, to get a very uh, fantasy-like feel in photography. They, they use it in a lot of fantasy movies. Um, and on a personal opinion, I'll tell you, if you can get hold of this and you know, work with it, um, you know, you're, you're really good to go. Um, and then there has always been this red and black palette which um, has been there way before even digital grading was possible. The thing about this is, I don't know why, but it gives a real sense of class and uh, elegance. There is something really, I don't know, James Bond about it. <laughs> OK, so now you saw enough about color. We, we live in a world um, where it's all about independence. You know, it's a very Western form of thinking. You do your own thing, um, you know, be, be independent, be indie. And whether you notice, or notice it or not, um, indie movies, indie music, um, indie fashion is flooding the market. And so that's a separate subculture by itself. So um, as a creative, I need to implore other creatives um, you know, to indulge yourself a bit in this subculture. I'm not on the verge of sounding like a sellout. I'm not saying conform to it. I'm just saying you know, notice, take notice of it, respect it, and uh, take all the good elements you can from it, you know? Um, listen to some indie music, it won't hurt, like Arcade Fire, The Weepies. This is, watch some indie movies, because they have a very, very distinct down-to-earth style, like Garden State, Once, you know? Notice what indie fashion is like and how it's different from uh, other uh, trains of fashion. You know, understand the dynamics of indie art, what it means, why the, why the colors are like that, um, and you'll get a real feel for this thing. because. You need to treat every artwork you have, or anything artistic created you have, like it's you know a pubescent teenager. You know you get your, you have your shy ones, you have your nervy ones, you have your loud ones and quiet ones, you have your goths and fashion victims, your drama queens, and you know you have those ones you can look at and say, ah, I know how you're going to look in 50 years. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, let's talk about what I came here to talk about. Thinking inside out the box. Now, while living in a world that is independent, we also live in a world where idea is king. Who has the biggest idea? He's the big man. He's the hero. Who has the biggest idea? He saves the day. Who has the better idea? He's well, the hero. So what is, how, or how do you come to this better idea? You know, people say, you know, think out of the box, think out of the box, my chunk. Think out, think out of the box. And sometimes I wonder, what the heck is this box? <laughs> you know? Well, what I used to think, rather. So, um, however, I've come to the opinion that where people go wrong is that they think that there is just one box. I see it as two boxes, the inside box and the outside box. Now, the inside box is where... Um, life's daily mundane happenings, cliches, and um, you know, routines happen. And these days, like 80% of Hollywood is in there. Um, and the moment we start to get creative, we also start to move to the edge of the inside box. Now, I don't know about you guys, but um, like I work at an agency. And when we are briefed on something, and you know the moment we're briefed on a new campaign, we're like so pumped, we want to like run onto our computer, see if they think of the biggest idea, you know, do the biggest artwork, which we shouldn't be doing, because um, I'll tell you why. That's where we go wrong. Because the moment you do that, you're skipping from being inside the inside box to outside the outside box. That's where there are, yeah, true, there are good ideas there. There are brilliant ideas there. 
and you know they are like over the top epic megalithic they are larger than life and that is the problem because the moment an idea becomes too big i think um you know so does other things like people's perception do they understand this or you know um practical things like budgets and you know time schedules so if we can't be inside the inside box and outside the outside box there's only one place left to be and that's inside the outside box that's where i think ideas are um big enough yet they're not over the top and they are also small enough but not clichés because guys you see um a big idea is uh, sorry a good idea is not a big idea it's just a relatable idea something you can relate to okay i need to pause here for a bit and tell you guys a story um it's actually a tale of singing in the shower um and this is a tale about um a friend of mine asel i think he's here today he used to work with me um and i haven't told him this but he's one of my biggest inspirations uh <laughs> and many of his work have have one of was and this is a, a story about one of that um he once had to work on a campaign for tigo i'm just paraphrasing and the campaign was about tigo um copy a tune that's where you hear someone's ringing tone on your phone and then you know you can dial some number and you can copy it on your phone straight off and so the idea he came up with is this guy goes into a public shower cubicle and he starts to shower and then he's singing you know he's singing in the shower and then someone down the hall is singing the same thing he sings and so that was the basic idea for the ad and he was telling me how he came up with this idea it was back when uh, he he and his friend used to go swimming and when they're done you know they would hit the showers not together <laughs> but they would hit the showers and you know they they play a little game you know he would start singing a song and the other guy had to copy the song as best as um he could creepy i know uh so and he and you see me that's how he came up with it you know he he related to that and for me that was just simplicity and brilliance all together because it was a relatable idea um he also told me another concept of a good idea if let's say you you take a good idea to be an idea that has an awesome concept a cool concept brilliant concept something that moves you then what is a great idea a great idea is the same thing um that has a brilliant concept but can move into all corners of media like tv print web um radio so then what makes a brilliant idea it's an idea that has a good concept that can move into all forms of media and also can keep going on for years and years and years and years and years and years and years so how do you arrive at this brilliant idea you know there are lot, there are tons of things that you can do you know maybe you can add, can you add a new dimension to it maybe you're just seeing x and y you know can you see z maybe you know maybe z can be um a sense like uh, a a visual sense an auditory sense is it something you can hear something you can see something you can touch or feel um maybe you can just take the problem itself or 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 even your basic concept and just do the opposite maybe because um i read a beautiful quote somewhere it says that some of the best ideas come from a state of inner conflict so just do the opposite uh maybe you can just do less no no much at all do more go at the top is your um is your concept you know fast paced or slow change the pace go slow or just simply you know take stuff out of it remove it um yeah so those are some of the things you can do to arrive at um uh, arrive with a good concept okay um now you probably heard people talking about people who work in the advertising industry at least talking about uh, mahang there is so many restrictions you know you can't come up with something good um you know and so what is our solution to restrictions we put a half naked woman in the ad and that solves everything no um my boss was my boss was once talking to me about um japanese advertising he uh, she said um that mainly there were three trains of thought in you know, ad- advertising in the world and one is the asians the way they do it is it's a very parental way oh my kid needs to grow he needs anchor that kind of thing and the western <laughs> 
uh, the Western uh, thought is independence, like I told you earlier, a very indie sense. And then you had the Japanese. Um, she said that um, in, in their earlier, uh, um, uh, at the roots of their advertising, uh, they, were, they, were, they were given so many, so many restrictions and they have no, they had so many restrictions that they had to look at the outside world or the advertising world from the perspective of a child. And so with that, you know, they've come up with all these things we see now and aren't they one of the most vibrant nations that are out there? You guys have also probably heard about, um, you know, Christian rock bands like Hillsong United, maybe Planet Shakers, maybe not. But, you know, it isn't your basic form of, uh, let's say, Christian worship. If you go to, like, uh, like, a Catholic church, it's very different from hymns. This is very loud, it's outrageous, it's in your face, it's shouting, jumping, and all that. How did they come up with that? How did they come up with that style of worship? Um, so I'm, someone was saying a story once about how, um, you know, when the African Americans were under oppression in the early Americas, and they were already Christians. So they didn't know how to worship because they weren't allowed. So, you know, the only thing they could do was shout out, and they did. They shouted out, and later, you know, uh, that transformed into jazz. And then when jazz spread, it transformed into a sense of rock, and that's what we have as Christian rock today. So you see, revolution comes from oppression. And, you know, maybe oppression um, is a good way for us to come up with better ideas, better concepts, you know, um, a, a visual revolution. Uh, a revolution of ideas and design where the enemy is the cliche. You've got to murder the cliche. Um, so, you know, take that and couple it with all the design trends that I spoke about earlier. Um, and maybe we can start to think inside out the box. Yeah. It's, been a, it's been great talking to you guys. Good evening. Peace.